Christ, the love of God from which nothing can separate us, and the life-giving Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us join together in praying today's prayer of the day. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who all behind you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Would you please be seated for today's reading? Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come, and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel. I will gather others to them besides those who already gather. The responsive reading is Psalm 67. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your name be known on earth, your sake and health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples of the let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth its increase. God, our own God, has blessed us. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. The second reading is from Romans 11. Paul writes, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people, whom he foreknew, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience. So they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. Here in the reading. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, 
It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. <coughs> So how are you with change? <laughs> I, I wrote that down at the beginning of my sermon and I thought, I'm fine demanding change from other people. <laughs> but when it comes to me changing, it often seems like, and maybe it's just me, but the older I get, the more it seems like I dig in my heels. The more I'm sort of rooted and my foundation is set and, and don't push me out of my comfort zone uh, type of thing. But we know that change is inevitable. To fight against change is like yelling at the sun every time it comes up and say, don't come up, why do you keep coming up every day? It's going to happen, right? That's just the way things work. But today Jesus reminds us about two things concerning change. One is the pathway to change, and it's often a very bumpy road. So if you want it, and have some change in your life, whether it's good change or bad change, it's probably going to be kind of a bumpy ride, so strap up. And the other is the direction of change. Where are we going with the change? Is it inclusion? Is it love? Is it mercy? Is it grace? Or are we just changing to get more of what we want? Are we changing because of the opinions and judgments of others, and we're kind of molded by that? Or are we rooted in a certain set of values that make up our foundation and that's where we're going to stick right so jesus challenges and is challenged i think by all of these changes i think most of you have heard me say this before but i i love it it's kind of my uh, go-to phrase that um, what we generally want is we want um, growth without change and we want change without conflict and we don't get either one. God says it doesn't exist. So if you want growth, there's going to be some changes that take place, right? That's, that's what it means to grow. You're leaving the old behind and moving into the new. And if you want that kind of change, it's going to involve some conflict, right? Because you're letting go of something and you're grabbing a hold. So there's some grief, there's some loss, but there's also some newness, excitement, and joy. Having said all that, in today's gospel lesson, I see some amazing change, growth, and conflict. Um, Jesus encounters a Canaanite woman that I believe has been sent to him by God himself. God has sent this Canaanite woman to the Son of God to do some change. And I think he's a little bit surprised by it. This woman has a sick daughter. She says, my daughter is tormented by a demon, and she's yelling at it, so we know that she's not getting real close to Jesus, right? She's not, like, standing right in front of him at this point. She's yelling, hey! I... So there's a crowd around Jesus, and she wants to get his attention, right? So she's yelling this. And she's yelling, Lord, son of David, which is the Jewish term that you would use for Jesus. So she knows enough that if she's going to get his attention and have him respond, she better talk his language, right? She knows who he is. Now remember in the Gospel of Matthew especially, whenever someone says, Lord, they know the identity of Christ. But if they call him teacher or rabbi, not so much. They don't know exactly who Jesus is. So this woman gets Jesus. The disciples respond in typical disciple fashion in the Gospel of Matthew. Their nickname is literally Little Faiths. That's what Jesus calls them. So he's like, hey, Little Faiths, how come you didn't believe? Hey, Little Faiths, why are you sinking in the water? That's his nickname for the disciples. So they say, um, Lord, send her away. She keeps irritating us. She's a nuisance, right? There's a key here. A lot of times when someone's a nuisance or something's bothering us or something's getting on our nerves, change is about to happen, right? Either we're going to pull back into ourselves or we're going to be open to this change 
that God is bringing our way. The disciples never seem old. Remember the 5,000? They're, they're, they're listening to Jesus. It's getting late in the day. And the disciples are like, holy, you better send them into town. Send them away. The disciples are always ready to send them away. And Jesus goes, no, you feed them. And they're like, this woman, send her away. And Jesus is like, hang on just a second. So growth change happens when we're bothered, frustrated, in conflict, and hurt because I think we become vulnerable. Um, Barbara Brown Taylor talks about these times being where our heart is cracked a little bit. And God goes, oh, there's an opening, right? When your heart is cracked or broken a little bit, God goes, I think I can sneak into that crack, right? And so there's a good thing that happens when we feel frustrated. Tell yourself that the next time. <laughs> Then Jesus responds in two amazing ways. The first one, you won't even see it in the gospel, but I think it's, it's, it's the most powerful of the two. First, he does not send her away, right? It doesn't say that, but that's what happens. The disciples are like, get rid of her, she's a nuisance, and Jesus doesn't listen to them. That's really important, I think. But what he says to the woman is, is quite disturbing, I would say. Probably some of the hardest verses in scripture to sort of parse out and figure out what's going on. He says to the woman, in essence, he says, look, I'd like to help you, but that's not why I was sent into the world. I was sent to feed the Jews, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and you are just a dog. That's what Jesus says to the woman. It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs, Jesus says. You are not included in my mission, Jesus says to the woman. Ah, but this Canaanite woman, she's not going to be put off. And why isn't she going to be put off? Because her daughter is sick and she needs help. Can you imagine somebody more motivated than a mother who has a sick daughter who needs help for her daughter? She's like, I am not going to be put off by being called a dog. What would it take for you to be put off from somebody? What would it take for you to just say, I'm not talking to them anymore. They're just a jerk. I'm not going to deal with this. Well, this was not the level for this Canaanite woman, right? So she gives a very sassy response. This is the sassiest woman in scripture, I would say. <laughs> she says to Jesus, the son of God, who she just called Lord, son of David. She says, yeah, well, okay, I'm a dog. That's the first thing she said. Fine, I'm a dog. Do you know people who just like roll with it? I'm always amazed by that because I want to justify myself. I want to say, I'm not a dog. You know, you, know, you kind of respond back just as strong as they give it to you. She doesn't say that. Do you know people who have said, you know, you're acting like kind of a jerk. And they go, yeah, sometimes I can be a jerk. I'm like, what? There's no argument? You know, that type of thing. So she says, yeah, so I'm a dog. Well, guess what? Dogs need to eat too. So I'm willing to scrounge the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Jesus is so amazed by this response. He says to her, woman, great is your faith. Great is your faith. This woman had great faith because she knew how good God was. And she was not going to be put off because her daughter was sick being tormented by her illness. Jesus only in, in, identifies two people in all of Scripture who have great faith. He only says that two times. He says it to this woman, and he says it to the centurion, the soldier, right, who comes and has another sick daughter and says, I need you to come and help my daughter. She's close to death. And Jesus says, okay, let's go. And he says, no, you don't even need to come to my house. All you have to do is say the word and my daughter will be healed. And Jesus says to the centurion, man, great is your faith. And her da his daughter was healed instantly. So the two people that Jesus says has great faith, neither one of them were Jews. I mean, that's pretty amazing. If he's come to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, what is going on here? Because he's constantly going and healing and touching and breaking laws that are people that are not of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Both of these people were outsiders, outside the covenant that God had made with his people Israel. 
and both came asking for help for someone they loved. That's what moved Jesus. What moved him is their love. It isn't that they argued correctly. It wasn't that they were strong in faith. It wasn't that they were powerful people. It wasn't that they got almost anything right. It was that they loved so intensely that they were not going to be put off even by Jesus, the Son of God. That's amazing. I wonder if our love even comes close to that some days. Well, I'm going to say something now, and I'm going to say this is just about me, because I know you guys are all set. So I'll just say this is about me. I love to justify myself, right? I love to name my own virtues. I love to prove that I'm right. Some days I just live for. Sometimes I like to pat myself on the back so much my elbow gets sore, right? Like, Rick, good job, good job. But the Canaanite woman is the hero of the story because she doesn't try to justify herself. She doesn't. She, she's like, I can't justify myself. I'm not part of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I'm a dog. But you know what? Dogs need to eat too, and I have a sick daughter. She doesn't point to her own worth. She doesn't say what she deserves. She doesn't try to win an argument with Jesus. She simply takes his excluding, derogatory remark, and she goes with it out of love for her daughter. This woman widens Jesus' vision of who he came to die for, I think. And that's why I think she was sent by God to God's only son. And Jesus shows us what it means to be human, he shows us what it means to change, and he shows us what it means to grow closer to God. The day we no longer change is the day we cease to be human. You and I are called this morning to change our outlooks too, especially when those outlooks exclude, serve to justify ourselves, insulate us from vulnerability, or go against God's will. The Canaanite woman teaches that there are no limits to God's love and that God is very, very good. She also reminds us of one last thing, an important lesson of faith. Faith allows us to enter God's story and to have our hearts transformed into that story. God's grace is rarely found in the main meal, but it's almost always found in the leftover. Sunday 
She said, but can I give a suggestion? And I said, sure. She said, I'd really like to see the people once in a while. And I said, I will turn the camera toward them a couple of times. She goes, I just feel so alone. So anyways, prayers for Rosalie today. Let us join together in our confession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, for those in need, and all of God's good creation. Dear God, give us the strength and the insight to follow you into change, growth, and new life. Help us to always expand your love and to strive for the inclusion of all of God's people. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the family and the friends of Bill Miller, who was laid to rest this last week. We pray that you would surround them with grace and with support. We also remember Justin and Julie Henizer, along with Clay, as they enter into married life together, continue to surround them with wonderful support and lots of love. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we seek an end to war. We pray for those in the world who suffer fighting and destruction. We pray that you would strengthen the people who suffer and that you would allow healing and recovery to begin today. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, we pray that you would come to the help of those who cry for help, bring healing and strength to those who are sick or hurting. We pray this morning for Deb Shaw and Marianne Anderson, the family and friends of Diane Watts, for Lesia and Marie, for Bernie Urban and Doug Duran and Charlie Sessoms, for Landon and Amy Bordelin, for Caroline Yates and Amanda Olson, Gerhard Johnson, Charlotte Price, and Lori Watts. We pray for Ray and Angela Jamison, for Deb Donnelly and Patty Witzke, Barb Ward, Vicki Blood, Tom Gray, and Rosalie McLenathan. We remember Carolyn Vitell, and for the names we carry in our hearts, Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we do give thanks for the flowers this morning as we join with the Pogemeyer girls in congratulating Les and Shirley as they celebrate 62 years of married life together. Thanks for the blessings, for the love, and for the grace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the peace of our Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please take a couple moments to greet those around you in peace.
offering prayer. God of fields and forests, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation, and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join together in the prayer that our Lord has taught. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, Forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated, but come for all things are ready and all people are welcome at God's table. Amen.
you please stand and let us sing together?